Hey guys, congrats for making it this far in this course. In this video, we'll be just be doing some final touches to our application thus far. Now let's just review our app quickly so we can see what kind of finishing touches would be required. And the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that we haven't really put in a sensible footer up until now. And then the other thing is that we need to publish this publicly so that our registration form is available publicly. And we need to get through those activities in this video. So the first thing that we're going to do is make a more sensible looking footer. So up until now, we have our includes file and we had our footer.php file. And in that file, we just had a div and we called it footer and we just echoed copyright. And what we did to kind of create distance between the footer and the rest of the page was, and I'll just go to the index page here. We put in some BR tags to kind of pad the space between our footer and the rest of the page. Now, the reality is that Bootstrap actually kind of gives us classes that allow us to have a fixed footer to the bottom of the page so we don't need 10 or so BR tags to put space between the content and the footer. And secondly, we're, we're going to be using Bootstrap to actually make our footer look like something sensible. So I'm just going to delete this footer tag firstly, and then we're going to rebuild it. So I'm deleting it and I'm going to probably retype some of the code that I just deleted, but either way, um, we, we can do it together. So remember that in the footer.php file that this closing div tag would correspond with the opening div tag in our header. So if I go back to the header, then I see that we have div container. All right, I remember the container is what gives us those that margin like space. So the space between the leftmost edge and the nav bar start or the content, that's what the container does. So our nav bar is in the content. I'm going to put the foot, the footer inside the content also, as you can see, it really is inside of that container tag rather. So <clears throat> I am going to, inside of the footer, right above that closing div for my container div, I am going to create a div and we actually had it just now, but I deleted it and that's no problem. We're doing this together from scratch. So I'm going to create a div and then I'm going to give this div the ID footer. And then inside the same footer, I'm going to give it a few bootstrap classes. So the first class I'm going to give it is P minus three, and I'll explain what each class does. Then I'm going to give it MB minus two and BG dash. And I'll just go back and reference the header to see what kind of BG we use. So we used BG dash dark. So we use a dark theme. Well, while we use the dark nav bar, we really use the color BG dash primary. So in the footer, I'm going to use BG dash primary to set the color of our footer. And then I'm going to say text dash white to make sure that we get white text. And then the clincher is fixed dash bottom. So this in particular will make sure that it is going to go down to the footer section of our uh, page or, or stay at the bottom of the page. So fixed bottom means that no matter how much or little content is on the page itself, the footer will always be at the bottom of the page because up until now we realize that if there's a little bit of content, it kind of rises up. And if there's a lot, then it gets pushed down, which is why we needed the BR tags. So this class will kind of force it down to the bottom and then combined all of these kind of create a nice blue footer section or a div with a footer content at the bottom of the page. And then inside of this footer, I'm going to put some more official text where I'm going to say that the copyright IT conference attendance system and echo the date. And then so that P tag with text dash center should center align some amount of text in our footer uh, footer div and center align it, of course, and print the date 
that it is being viewed. So I'm go just going to save this and then I'm just going to go back and refresh my page. And if you look at it, now you'll see that we have a more sensible looking footer. Now let me explain what each class does. So the first class P3 is talking about the padding. So we can just go back to our page, right click and go to inspect element. And then we can kind of tick and untick each um, element. So I'm just inspecting the footer itself and then we can tick and untick, untick the classes being referenced here. So text dash white is just saying that the color of the text should be white. And I think white looks better against blue background than blue, but of course you can customize it yourself. P-3 means that the padding is applied. So if you look at the difference when we click padding versus take it off, you see that the padding changes each time. So I can leave that. And then the MB-2 talks about the margin to the bottom. So if I untick that, then you notice that that white space that's at the bottom of the footer kind of goes away. So actually of all these classes, I would probably want to just remove the MB2. So I'll just go back, remove the MB2. And you can of course find all of these references on the Bootstrap website in the documentation. And you can customize your footer how you would like it to be. Now notice that my footer kind of stretches right across the page instead of being confined to the container, right? So the container would be along this margin that I'm moving my mouse, whereas the footer is stretching right across. And it is a common design pattern to actually have, I notice that the footer, as I scroll, the footer just stays there, right? And it's a common design pattern to have the nav bar stretch right across, even if the content itself is kind of within the margin. So I'm actually going to just do that and I'll just modify the header section and I'll take this entire nav out of that div. So I'm just going to cut that entire nav section out of the container div and I'm going to put it above that container div. So I still have my nav, everything still works as it should. But then when I refresh, you see that my nav will stretch right across the page. And then further to that, if I wanted the actual content of the nav inside the container, then I can actually just go back and in this div, I can say container. So I have collapse nav bar dash collapse. And then I can just say container. And then once I do that, I'm sorry, just press some wrong buttons there. So I say container and refresh and we get something like this. So the links themselves are moved in and the logo is still out. So, I mean, you, you can make that decision if you want yours to look like that. That's entirely up to you. Um, but I kind of look like the look of having it kind of spread across the top, right across the page. So the header is right across and the footer is right across. And I kind of like that look. So that's the first um, touch that we're making to our application. Next, we want to just upload it to Heroku. Um, so we're going to go ahead and check in our changes into GitHub and then synchronize with Heroku. And of course, we made a change where we updated the profile picture. So we need to update our database also. So I'm, I've opened up my workbench and I connected to my remote database and I already have the database here with a little bit of data. I don't want to remove this entire database or remove all the tables and have to rebuild them. So what I'm going to do is just manually go into my attendee table and add the column. So I can just right click attendee and then I can go to alter table and then that would allow me to add any column that I wish. So I'm just going to go back to local, my, um, sorry, my PHP, my admin and find the field and recreate it accordingly. All right. So when that loads, I went to the attendee, well, attendance underscore DB database attendee table, found avatar path and see that it's varchar 200 and it allows null. So I'm just going to copy the data type. So, I mean, you don't have to copy and paste. I'm just doing this so I can speed up this process, but I'm going to call it avatar. What, what was it? Avatar underscore path. So I already built the code to look for that field in my dev. So obviously whatever I'm 
whatever change I'm making to the production needs to mimic what it's looking for in dev. So it's a Varchar 200. And once I made those changes, I can apply, update my remote database. And then once the database is ready, then I can do my upload. So I'm going to go to GitHub and I'm just going to check in these changes and I'll just say updated header and footer. And I would have already updated the fact that I added the profile pictures to GitHub. So I wouldn't, well, that's why I only have these two unchanged files. So depending on what you may have done in your GitHub, then you may want to add more to your comments, but that's what I've done. So I'll just commit to master and push. And then once that's done, we know we can go to Heroku and log into our application. And then we just go to deploy and we go ahead and deploy branch master. Once that's done, we can, of course, just view our application. So our application is here and I'm just going to try and fill out this form. All right, so having filled out the form, I'm just going to choose a profile picture and then I'm going to click submit and let's just see if everything works. And there we go, test Heroku and there's our fox now if i log in just to view all of the application or the applicants who will be attending the conference and see the information that they uploaded and i see here that the admin login is not working so i went over to the database and i see that i literally have the user admin and the word password now remember that we went through some amount of rigor trying to harden the way the password appears and what should really happen is that we should have the admin user, yes, and the password in a hashed form. So that is not happening here. So what I'm going to do is just remove this admin user. And well, I can just remove all these users. I don't need them at this point. And then I'm just going to refresh this page. And then do remember that once we load the page that the query should run or the Oh, sorry. I, <laughs> so the code should run, but what I didn't do was apply when I deleted. So let me try that again. So with Workbench, when you modify the data set, like I just did where I deleted them, I need to click apply, which will actually generate that query. So I'm just going to click apply again, and then the query would have been run successfully. Now, when I refresh the page and it loads that con file, then it will go through and it went through because it resubmitted admin and password to the form, which also appeared in my database when I re when I rerun that query to select star from users, then I see my admin user here with the hashed password. All right, so if you run into that difficulty, which I'm sure you won't, but I'm just showing you what can go wrong. So at this point, these are the attendees in our database. And here's the most recent one, which is Test Heroku, who is an administrator. And then if I view, then I see that profile picture. If I go back to the list and I view another one who was pre profile picture, then I see that it's only loading that default picture like we would have designed it to do on our local dev environment. So that is how we go about building a kind of end-to-end -end application with PHP and using our PDO libraries to help us perform CRUD operations and then GitHub for source control and change tracking and finally Heroku for web hosting. And we had to use a remote SQL server and SendGrid for using email services. So at the end of the day, that is how you go about building a PHP application from scratch up until inception and then styling it with Bootstrap 4 and hosting it on the internet.